thank you for joining us today at No Talk. Uh, today we'll be discussing policy making under uncertainty. No Talks is brought to you by the Knowledge Project, a joint initiative between the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Knowledge Foundation, MBRF. Um, that aims to promote knowledge societies and policies as transformational means to achieve sustainable development. So to begin with, let me introduce myself as the moderator of today's talk. My name is Dina Al Mufti. I'm an entrepreneur and investor. I am founder and board member of Injez Egypt. I am the regional MENA ambassador of the Global Women's Entrepreneur Network, WIDO. Joining me today, uh, I am honored to have Ms. Kachu Halkiri. She is the head of the Unit for Governance Policy Unit at the Finnish Ministry of Finance. The unit's responsibilities are open government steering systems, uh, general governance policy, civil service legislation, ethic, ethics, and leadership policy. Uh, Mrs. Holkeri is the current chair of the OECD's working party on open government and comes to us today with a wealth of knowledge and experience on policy making. Um, Ms. Kachu, it's such an honor to have you with us today at today's talk. And just for everyone listening today, uh, just to note that we have simultaneous translation available should you need it. So our, today our discussion is about policy making under uncertainty. And um, our, our session today uh, want, is reflective of what we've all been through um, this past year and a half as a global community. Uh, we are truly living in unprecedented times. The pandemic has affected the entire world and has left us all with a great feeling of uncertainty uh, regarding the future. And for the first time in our lifetime, we have actually experienced the world come to a stop and it's affected every single uh, one of us, both personally and professionally. We have all witnessed the force of this pandemic and its effect on our health and the health of our loved ones. We have witnessed the state of emergency in hospitals uh, around us schools closing down, our children staying home. We have experienced quarantine. Uh, we have experienced companies going out of business, companies going online full force with their businesses and global economies being affected overall on a global scale. All in the meantime, while governments all over the world are reacting to handle this very dire situation. So, which brings me to our first question to you, Ms. Kachu. What, in your opinion, having, having seen that we have all been through this together as a global community, what would you say from your experience are some of the global governmental best practices in policy making that you have seen in the face of this pandemic? Thank you so much. Uh before I answer your question, uh, thank you for the question, but I would also like to thank for, it's a great honor and privilege to be here today. And I would very much like to thank the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Knowledge Foundation and the UNDP for this great opportunity to, to be here today. Um, I will also be sharing some slides. So I'll try to, um, to share my screen, but I will- uh, Wonderful. I will- um, try to answer your question um, with this um, with, with this theme. Uh, like, like was said, this has really been an uh, exceptional time and, uh, and we have all had to react to this both personally or uh, our governments and the whole global community. But uh, what, what would be the best practice and what, what, what is the best practice uh, in these kinds of situations is how we could be more proactive, not just reacting to, to these issues, but to be proactive and how in our ways we could build trust uh, between the different actors in the society so that we are all working for the same goal uh, for the exit from the pandemic for a better future and for a more proactive and, and ensuring this through a more proactive uh, policy making. Uh, and this trust, uh, 
and I will come back to this. I will just very briefly go through some points, but, but, but this trust is also um, crucial for us in this kind of a situation. Uh, some, uh, a, 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 a wise person has said that actually the most important ingredient uh, in the COVID vaccines is trust. So we know that as governments, yeah. we need to ensure the trust in, in order to be able for citizens to trust us and, and, um, and to, to uh, also uh, uh, act according to the guidelines uh, that are beneficial for the society. But to, do, to be proactive, I wanted just to share with you this uh, idea of anticipatory innovation governance. So we need to anticipate. So that's one part. Uh, anticipation is uh, the creation of knowledge about the future. And I have to say that there has been uh, already before a lot of knowledge about possible pandemics, but we and we have just kind of uh, had them as nice to know, but we have not uh, prepared ourselves for this pandemic uh, uh, well That's enough. Very true. And then there is anticipatory innovation that is doing something based on the based on the uh, knowledge that we have. But what we are trying to achieve and what what would be good is to have those structures and mechanisms that would actually allow us to, to have um, anticipatory innovation uh, in our systems uh, so that we would actually be uh, using the information we get from the anticipation to do innovations, to prepare ourselves, not just to react to the possible uh, uh, things that are occurring, but, but being able to shape the future and also to be able to uh, use the opportunities that the future uh, provides us. And I will stop here. I will just put my next slide, but I will stop here to, to have some discussion, but there are a lot of things we can do better and I will be happy to, to answer those, yes. Yeah, so just to reiterate to the audience, again, these are very important points, being proactive and not reactive. Uh, so many times uh, governments, are unprepared for these kinds of things, although these scenarios do come across, but uh, governments end up being reactive rather than proactive. So definitely having systems and structures like you mentioned uh, and, and trusting in governments is also a key ingredient uh, and having that anticipate, anticipatory uh, innovation in the structure and the system would would allow for, uh, for, for those uh, better reactions to these kinds of situations that are uh, indeed great challenges of our times. Um, uh, another, uh, another thing, maybe another angle um, I'd like to get your opinion on is in con clearly conceiving policy making as a linear process no longer holds anymore. And so from your perspective, Coming up with policy and innovative policy, and 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 uh, making sure that all all um, sectors of government are aligned in these new policies, you know, can be a daunting task and a daunting challenge at times. Uh, how have you, in your situation, um, uh, if you can give us a, an example of um, how you've come up with uh, policy making where it's collective? and a communal policy making that is innovative in Finland as an example? Well, I, I think one very, one very important thing is uh, that we should forget uh, or, or we should kind of uh, stop being selfish, uh, both as persons and, and as organizations. We are in this together. So if we want to achieve uh, what you what you were asking for uh, we need to to dialogue we need to have uh, we need to uh, cooperate in the inside the government so we need to dialogue we need to understand better each yeah. other's uh, working areas each other's mm -hmm. uh, the, the shared goals but also not just in the government but but the government with the society uh, with with the people with the with the companies uh, uh, politicians and civil servants, the trust uh, trust is based on the dialogue. So this is very important uh, to have this cooperation and, and shared understanding. And we cannot have this shared understanding if we are not um, uh, in a better dialogue. And this is why we would need to, uh, uh, to in, um, build into our systems also 
to more possibilities for participation of outside uh, stakeholders. And one example from Finland during the pandemic was that we had these lockdown dialogues where we actually, uh, uh, together with civil society organizations, we organized uh, discuss virtual discussions with citizens, different kinds of groups of citizens, pensioners, uh, children and youth, um, um, uh, teachers, uh, uh, health workers, to get to know how the pandemic affects the uh, citizens. This is very important information for the government on, 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 on getting this uh, information directly from the citizens. So this kind of dialogue is very important and, and increasing the pu pu participation uh, in the different stages of our, of our policymaking cycle is, is, is really important in the future, already now, but more so also in the future, yeah. Yes, so definitely a best practice from Finland. I think it's for all of you that you are aligned in that. I love how you said we need to stop being selfish. We're all in this together. And really, that is really the core essence of all government policymaking. It's for the better good of the society, the better good of the country. Um, and, and for this to sound off in every uh, core value uh, coming out of government policy. Um, so so th you, you make a great uh, point with that and understanding that we all have shared goals, whether internally within the government or outside uh, the government in, in, the, in various uh, sectors of society. Um, uh, I, I know that there's also a lot of innovation, like you mentioned, coming out of uh, Finland in, in terms of your innovation and inclusive approaches um, in managing risks. Um, how, how, if you can share more on that, on, on how uh, there are you know, innovative and inclusive uh, approaches and examples coming out of um, Finland during the past period. Yes, I think one of the strengths, uh, strengths in, our, uh, in, in, in innovation and one of the important things, it's linked to, it's linked to what, what I already mentioned, but, uh, but it's, it's, to, uh, it's to make experiments. Uh, so smaller, also small scale experiments. Uh, you don't always have to kind of, um, when you go, you can have, a, you can have, have great innovations that are uh, immediately a success. But you need an experiment culture, and this is what we've been trying to build in our system, that you can experiment and you're also allowed to fail. So uh, then you find those innovations that last, but not every innovation or every experiment can be a success. Uh, but out of all the experimental culture, then we find the innovations that are success. And another thing is that also in the innovation, uh, uh, we have found that those innovations where we, we where we are where there are multiple stakeholders where we can uh, join hands with um, researchers, uh, citizens, businesses together. Those are the, those those are often the ones that are that are kind of the the uh, farthest living Successful. and and, uh, and best long term. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, uh, to your point, I'm, I'm very curious about something. When you talk about innovation, uh, you know, uh, in, in policy making and how you're getting partnerships and different stakeholders from society engaged, sometimes um, we find that with innovative solutions, there is in government a tendency for bureaucracy, uh, a high level of bureaucracy to come into play. I'm just curious from your experience, um, what is the best practice in overcoming this bureaucracy? And, and if you're testing out these innovations, even if it's in a small way, how you're able to test them out uh, quickly in, in avoiding long-term bureaucracy to take hold of these innovations? Yeah, that, that, that's true. There, there are often a lot of uh, uh, hindrances and burdens, and legislation is often one that that has. Uh, and therefore, there there needs to be. There can be, for instance, we have had this experiment legislation that allows you to experiment. But also, I think in the in the uh, besides that, in the real life, in the in the agencies, in the organizations that are trying to innovate and and take forward these experiments, the 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 role of the leadership is very crucial. 
so that the leadership supports the experiments and it supports them also if they fail uh, and and yeah. they are kind of they give they give room for new kinds of thinking uh, and also another thing uh, is uh, that we of course um, we need to uh, train ourselves as civil servants or or work public sector people we need we need new kinds of skills we are, we are not always uh, born with these innovative skills or 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 all these capacities uh, we don't always know how to anticipate so we need to train and 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 and, and uh, increase our skill skill level but also there the the role of the leadership uh, both political and uh, civil servant leadership is very crucial to give room to the experiments to give room to the innovations also resources because that, that's also needed you cannot uh, you need also resources for the for the uh, innovation work yeah yes absolutely so to your point it's hands down to have the leadership that is driving this innovation and driving the the speed of this innovation as well and uh, uh, that that factors in and to your point training is a very big factor and oftentimes uh, neglected or um, uh, underestimated the power of trainings and developing skills. Um, not all governments put a big focus on that aspect, but clearly it is uh, it is badly needed. Um, and, and that brings me to uh, my next question, which is regarding, of course, we all admire so much um, uh, the amazing uh, educational system coming out of uh, Finland uh, in terms of um, uh, the, the various skills uh, that come out and uh, we see that some of the highest uh, um, achievements in math in the world come out of the Finnish education system. And I, I'm wondering if you can share with us the process of how you maintain such global high standards of excellence in that regard. Well, um, I would like to give you several answers, but I think one of the one of the crucial issues in the in our educational system, and I have to also obviously say that there is a lot of things to develop here in yeah. Finland, so it's not always so rosy as it maybe <laughs> seems. But but we are quite we are quite proud of the education system. But I think the very a very core issue of our education system, besides. Well, but the system is good, but it, it is it is the training of the teachers. So the teachers are very well educated, and the teachers' training, and also the commitment of the Finnish teachers. So the the, the human aspect uh, is very important also in in the educational system. So so well well trained teachers with with kind of a very high level commitment uh, to their work. That's a very crucial uh, element. But also, I think one of the issues that uh, is um, core also in our educational system and we are uh, like for instance at the moment we are looking at uh, how 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 to ensure the continuous learning uh, uh, but it is the continuous development so uh, as, a, as a country in Finland we are we, we are we are seldom pleased with ourselves so we always see fault in our system so there is this need we, we are trying to be better <laughs> you hold yourselves to high standards yeah, so we, we are never that uh, happy with our system. So we are trying to improve it all the time. So I think that's one that's one success as well. Amazing. Uh, it's amazing to see that a core value in the in in your government policy and in your culture as a whole is really about uh, the, the development and, and trainings and and raising the bar on on the skills, both of the professionals in government and outside government uh, and in your schooling system. So it's great to see that as a as a core value, always uh, raising uh, the bar on that in that regard. Um, I, I'm also curious to know when you speak of innovations also in government and in policy, I'm curious about the innovations you also have um, uh, economically speaking uh, in terms of uh, uh, encouraging innovation and entrepreneurship in in Finland um, and 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 how maybe startups also affect uh, if they have an effect on your economy uh, in general and in your policy making in encouraging small and medium uh, businesses to scale and grow. Yes, ob obviously that is also a very important uh, important thing. So so. Uh, 
both in the business sector as, as in the government sector, but the business, of course, the business sector start startups, they are very important uh, element of, of the, and, uh, and inf influential, and, and they can also be, be kind of uh, big, big su successes. But I think there it is important to, to remember the same thing I said about the experiments in, in the government that uh, we need to kind of uh, support the start 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 ups uh, sorry uh, even though we know that not all of them become huge successes and innovations but but we need to kind of have this uh, this is also kind of, uh, uh, risk taking and and the risk taking element is uh, is important so we cannot always kind of be 100 we cannot um, uh, uh, secure in the beginning uh, that all the starts up startups are going to be big successes. So that this is a risk uh, that is worth taking also society wise, uh, uh, both in government and in, in, in businesses. So this is what we are trying to kind of have this kind of an um, I, I mental uh, changing the mental attitude of not all uh, because it's hard for people to fail. So we're trying to change the mental attitude of allowing also people to fail and then just start anew, but not kind of uh, blaming blaming on on too much on the failure, but seeing that as an opportunity to learn as well. Of course, hoping for big successes at the same time. Of course, yes, yes. But I love how your focus is on changing cultural barriers and changing cultural mindsets. And, uh, and allowing uh, your young generation to be risk averse and to, you know, to, uh, to take the risk of exploring their innovative ideas and bringing them into fruition is something definitely very important um, in, in having uh, uh, an open culture that is dynamic and innovative at the end of the day. Um, and I know you wanted also to share a few uh, of your uh, other best practices, Kachu, through your slides. If there's any other uh, points you uh, would like to cover, no, I would just maybe 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 mention four areas that we are trying to that we think are very important to to. Uh, I already mentioned that the the continuous learning is something that uh, in our education system, uh, that's one important thing in the future is that um, we. Um, we we can we can study in, in the school or university and have one degree but and then and then when but when the world changes we need to kind of be able to adapt to new things uh, and this 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 doesn't have to be going to the university again but we have now just put up this kind of continuous learning center on and this is also an important thing because uh, or an important example because uh, in this learning um, continuous learning center, uh, it is not just the government who, who makes this happen, but we need all the organizers of the, of, the, of the schools and different kinds of training institutes in this. We need, we need the uh, uh, business people there because we need to know what are the skills and, and uh, training that uh, businesses in Finland need in the future. So this is also very much a, a shared, shared um, exercise. Uh, in, to, to initiative to better skills in our in the future for the for the for the well-being of the nation yeah and, and i'm i'm curious of course all governments have faced tremendous challenges in coming up uh, you know with policies uh, um, uh, that can uh, that can truly have an impact and um, a lot of time a lot of times there's uh, there are challenges when, when we're trying to implement policies. What would you say are some of the, the challenges in your experience um, and what are some best practices in overcoming uh, these challenges in rolling out new policies? Um. Well, one, one, there are there are so many silent challenges, so not it's not easy to, to start yes. with, with where to start. But I think one of the issues is that we often do a lot of strategies and a lot of policies, uh, uh, but the implementation that is the tough thing to actually implement the issues that that are in the policies, so that the policies don't end up just being paper, but they actually uh, end up in being changes in the society. And this is really difficult. And this is something. Uh, this is. Uh, it's difficult to to um, 
combine the strategies and policies with the resources and with the different actors in the society. And this is uh, this is actually something uh, that I don't know if there is a best practice for this uh, anywhere. This is, a, <laughs> this is a thing that we're struggling. It's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's that's the that's the tough part of, of how to align the budget uh, budget resources, the policies, so that and also in in uh, because. Um, all the time, the issues that we're tackling with are becoming more and more complex. And one of our one for for if you take for instance climate change and how the prognosis that we have for finance policies and and financial uh, economic and financial policies they don't really yet have inside them these climate change issues. So this is one thing that we need to also how in the future when we have prognoses and and plans for the financial economic policies. How can we have the climate change, climate actions, not two separate exercises, but aligned together? That would be the kind of uh, way to um, achieve uh, uh, actual results. And that is one of the pilot projects that we have in Finland for the uh, anticipatory innovative go innovation governance. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. And I think we have a, um, a, a few questions coming in from the audience. Um, uh, and just uh, we'll quickly go to that. But um, I love how you express that having open and shared dialogues between government and people. And this uh, is not done enough. Uh, and really, it's something that can uh, really have a tremendous impact in, ha is in having this open communication and understanding the shared goals within the society. And um, uh, I love the point that you made about uh, the role of leadership and how that is crucial and this, uh, the training uh, and, and development of skills is something so important. Uh, so these are uh, a, a few very important points we all need to keep in mind uh, when we talk about policies in times of un uncertainty. Um, so I will go to, uh, to some of the, the questions, um, if you don't mind, Katju. Um, okay, we have a question coming uh, from uh, Dr. Uh, Mujib uh, asking, is there any po uh, supporting policy to the future development in tourism during the pandemic? Uh, would love your thoughts on that. Uh, so, so, so that does, that, is there any supporting policy for tourism? Uh, Yes, uh, how, like how tourism has been affected uh, during the pandemic and what are your thoughts on, you know, how governments um, can offer that kind of support to uh, uh, to supporting tourism in their countries in well, the face yeah, of this sure crisis. I'm the first person to answer that, but I think the one, <laughs> uh, one of the points here is, is that uh, I think this was one of the uh, areas where maybe maybe uh, in many countries we a little bit failed because we were not prepared. We had not thought of this be beforehand on how this would, this would go. So this is certainly a good case for the anticipatory uh, work, but, but it's also, I think, uh, of course, um, quite quickly there were, were uh, 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 new possibilities on how uh, to organize the tourism inside the country, but that's of course not, not uh, uh, it's not enough for for the, for the community, but this is this is also a very. Uh, I think this pandemic has taught us uh, that this is an area where we really need to innovate, and not just country by country, but uh, very very kind of uh, important to uh, have the dialogue uh, between the countries. And this is a shared international uh, issue, not just because we want to. Uh, obviously, uh, Finland is uh, very cold in the winter time, so obviously we. Would want to come to warm countries, so this is a, this warm is countries a, exactly. What what I said yeah. about the cooperation inside the country also very much applies to uh, between countries. So it's very between important between countries that we, we exactly learn, yeah, that we learn from this pandemic that the cooperation and dialogue between the countries, if we want to be able to better support in the future the tourism uh, industry, we really need to have this cooperation. And yes, dialogue. so and more than experience. any other time in, in history, globally, now is the time for countries 
to have uh, uh, dialogue, to have uh, more of collaboration uh, and, and a collaboration on various levels of policy. Now is the time, truly. Yeah. Uh, which brings uh, me to one of the questions coming from Arwa Saif, um, who is asking you, do you think if um, we copy the Finland experience uh, uh, to the educational system in the Arab world, uh, is there a way uh, that it could work well and, and succeed here? What are your thoughts on that? Um, um, I, I always say maybe not a directly copy paste, but I think that there is. I think I think that it is it is good to uh, look at the, the, the system. And I know that there are some Finnish schools. Uh, 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 actually, my 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 own son worked in a Finnish uh, uh, educational system school in Oman. So that there is a there is this these kinds of individual schools that are based on the Finnish system. So I think that this is. Um, uh, it is good to to look at other country systems and and I think an in, uh, uh, look at them in depth and then take all the best uh, qualities from there them and leave the leave the not so good parts and and in that I think it uh, Finland is a good example to look into because we are also very willing to share what is not good in our system so so we will also tell yeah. you what what to not copy and not just what to what to take on board yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, take take the, take the best of it and uh, not necessarily copy, of course. Yeah. Um, that's what everyone uh, hopes to achieve. Um, also, if I um, add, I think there, you, we have. Yeah, sorry. That the our system is done uh, was Please. done already. Uh, it's not for the current system is not for the future. So when you're building something for the future, so you should look at the future and the needs in the future and the Finnish system is for today. So that's why you also need to kind of adjust it to the future and not take it as it is because it's already old because it was built for the previous uh, decades, yeah. The generations, yes. Um, we have a question from Chidi Yang who is asking about uh, Finland's vaccine policy, mask wearing policy and whether a digital passport is compulsory or free will at this point. Uh, our vaccine policy is that uh, uh, it's not compulsory to take the vaccine, but I think we have at mo we are we are quite high level uh, in the vaccines. So uh, so we have had uh, two, and I think this is this is where uh, the trust, like I mentioned in the very beginning, that uh, it is very important that uh, Finnish people and and people trust the the government because then they will take the vaccines because they trust. And this is this is, I think, our uh, strength that we have been able to to um, have two vaccines uh, for for almost everybody now. That not not for the smallest children yet, but 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 that. And we 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 are actually we are a little bit later in the in the uh, pass coron COVID passport or the COVID uh, digital. Uh, mm. We have that online, so it is uh, it is uh, online. But the use of that passport for services. Is is going to the parliament uh, in in the very next days, but we have the kind of digital digital um, solution has been ready for a long time. So there is immediately when you have your second vaccine, you get the kind of uh, QR code from the from our system. But using that for services, that is still under preparation. Yeah, which is later than in some other yeah. countries. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That. Yes, that is clear. And um, uh, we have Shitro uh, uh, Mujamdar, who is asking if you can please share more about the banking system of Finland and how Finland's banks hedge uh, this tail risk. In general understanding, uh, we know almost uh, all Finnish banks uh, have this resilience. So. Uh, so some information that you can share about uh, uh, the banking system at this point in Finland. Uh, uh, I, I think that's maybe too complicated. I, I would be happy to to share that by email later on if that's okay. I could share some links and yes. I think it's it's too complicated. I'm not a banking expert, so I'm, <laughs> yes, I would be yes. happy to share. I would be happy to send some information. Many of the banks that work in Finland are actually not just Finnish, they are Nordic uh, cooperation banks and so forth. So the biggest banks, clear. Are, banks are, are, That's are, clear. are shared Nordic banks, yeah. 
uh, a, a question from Tunis, from uh, Galila, who is asking that uh, sometimes governments have very short-term uh, policies uh, or, or short-term visions. And how, uh, how is it that you would recommend uh, uh, like wor working on lo setting long-term visions for the country and working towards that? Um, and that's something that I would imagine is crucial and very important to gather everybody in the country and in society, in various communities together in, in, in moving towards one common vision. And, and what is a, a strong, a, a, a way to be able to bring that to light in your opinion? Yeah, uh, that, that is a very crucial question because in every country, I think we go by the policies, political cycles four years or, or six years or so. But uh, how we have tried to tackle this, that, that we, there is actually a futures committee in the parliament uh, that looks at the futures issues and the government does a futures report to the parliament. Uh, and it, when it, it was prepared, the futures report this time, or it's actually uh, at the moment under preparation, there were dialogues organized around the country for citizens so to, to take part. But this is also something that we would like to uh, still improve and, 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 and further develop. But at the moment, it, it is already kind of um, the, the Committee of Future in the Parliament, uh, we think is a, an excellent Finnish innovation, that there is a group of parliament, members of Parliament that convene regularly on the issues of the future and hear experts and, hear, and, and, and dialogue with citizens. On, on a regular basis, that is very important. Yes, yes yeah, yeah, it's a permanent committee, so, so it's a, a permanent it's, it's, committee. Yeah, 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 it has been yeah, so, for, for, already for 20 years, so it's a, of course the mem members change when there is elections, but anyway, but the, the committee is a permanent one, so there is always a, a futures committee in the parliament. That is great that you continuously keep an open dialogue between society and between the government uh, and, it's, and it's ongoing. Um, we had a question about how you evaluate uh, policies. What is your evaluation for policies once they're rolled out in assessing these innovative policies should be widened in scope uh, or, or pulled back and changed? Yes, there is, there is uh, uh, in all these kinds of uh, big or, or smaller uh, government uh, policies or, or, or uh, project or legislation, there should be, there is a kind of evaluation element. We're also trying to have kind of, um, um, uh, 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 sorry, ex ante evaluations, of course, and, 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 and uh, interim evaluations during the, during the work, but, but also, of course, af afterwards. Uh, I think the weak point is always uh, acting upon on the evalu evaluation results. So often the evaluations are done and, and we can get results uh, to change this or that. Uh, but then the new projects are already going on and there is not a linkage between the evaluation and the next policies. And this is a kind of uh, this is a very oh. important thing to have the cycle that that from from the policy planning to the uh, to the decision making to the implementation to the evaluation again to the planning but it it seems to be more like cutting from <laughs> planning and then after the evaluation so using the evaluation uh, uh, we are doing great evaluations and i think this is same for many many countries but then to actually use the information from the evaluations is a, a weak point yeah um, that's great. And um, we have a few questions here regarding um, how uh, policymaking was affected uh, with the, uh, especially with the coronavirus. I know we touched on that in the beginning of our talk, but if there's anything else or any ex other examples uh, you can share with the audience in that respect. Well, I think that one of the problems or, or challenges that came with the coronavirus when, when, when the previous question was about this long-term uh, issue, and then we have the government cycle the four, ye four, four years, for instance, in Finland, but the corona pandemic even kind of, uh, it was from day to day, almost from day to day exercises. And we we'll some, somehow are very important to keep on, uh, to keep on in mind the long-term vision and also the exit strategy, but it kind of got, the, the, the pandemic uh, in, in, in Finland, but also in other countries, forced to maybe to look on the daily and weekly basis, and and that kind of it, it's really tough to keep the long-term vision. While 
you're, while you're kind yes, of... Yes, fighting mind, fires yeah. with the challenge. But it's important uh, yes. to start thinking about the exit strategy from day one, even though at that point you think there is no time, but it's really important to... to also to keep up the hope and 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 to 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 be to be prepared so to to be proactive also in that sense not just kind of uh, uh, we are we are very good in handling uh, or, or rather good in handling and reacting to the crisis but then how to come back and 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 uh, that is also an, a, a very um, thing yeah yes it, it, so it's planning for the future what comes after the pandemic yeah, yeah. Uh, which brings me to one of the questions asked for from the audience was there a, a strategy to support small businesses uh, or startups during the crisis were, were there uh, any policy in place or strategies that that happened in, in Finland yes qu quite soon in the in the in the beginning of the pandemic there was there was a, a, a support uh, so financial support for the very small businesses because the very small businesses for uh, for smaller and bigger but for for the for the of course obviously the bigger businesses have more flexibility with their resources but very small businesses one man one family one small they they are running their their financing is more kind of uh, from from uh on a daily basis so so that that was the kind of yeah. very crucial issue that we could have a support program for those for those companies that they could survive from the uh, day to the next and also also there was a there was this kind of uh, financial so money <laughs> money for those but also kind of um, uh, helping them with their rent so for for instance the government owns a lot of buildings so the government uh, 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 real, real estate company also gave some um, uh, free rents for the com smaller companies so that they could survive. So that, that was really important uh, uh, in the beginning. And this was then done several times because of the, because of the pandemic didn't uh, go uh, pass as quickly as we thought. So there was need for more, more rounds of support than we thought in the beginning. Yeah. That's great. And um, uh, um, there's there's um, a really a lot of questions that I hope to we're able to get uh, through most of your questions today. Uh, um, uh, I'll, I'll take one. Um, uh, one question is asking, uh, in your uh, opinion, what are some of the best practices or exchanges or collaborations that can be done in the Arab world together with Finland in exchanging best practices uh, like the success you have in your educational system and policy making or, or other governmental best practices to bring here into to the other Arab world? And are there any kind of collaborations or talks in exchanging um, uh, any uh, best practices in this part of the world with Finland? Uh, yes, uh, obviously, I think it's. Uh, uh, I think we would be happy to. To uh, I think it's important that um, uh, it's win-win. So that uh, what is interesting and what you think is important, that would be the kind of uh, core. But I think the the for my own area, we have had quite a lot of uh, uh, cooperation with uh, in regard to the different. Um, uh, open government and youth issues. So, because young people and children, that's that's a very important uh, thing. And uh, and luckily, you have more young people. We are struggling with a uh, uh, much uh, <laughs> aging, much more uh, aging society. Older so generation be, population. Be, yeah, yeah. So I think that's a very important. Uh, but we are very, we are still very uh, keen on you, young young people and youth. And the participation and of children and young people, I think that's a very important area. And there's been cooperation in that area between uh, the Arab world and, and, and us. So from my own from my own um, uh, working area, so that has been one. And I think that's a very important uh, element. But uh, oh, I, I would just like to say that, of course, uh, I, I think every uh, I'm very much in favor of all international cooperation and sharing. And also, if there is if there are issues that you would like to ask me, or if they would uh, like to contact me, so I will be very happy to answer any questions later, or or help with the contacts. I, I'm in Twitter, and and uh, I also share my email. So, so I'll be happy to do to do that and and answer the bank banking question that I I I, I couldn't answer here. So.
I'm not sure if. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry, we had a, a glitch with the with the line. Um, so, like I was mentioning, there was uh, a lot of questions uh, regarding um, uh, the policies coming out of uh, uh, Finland in terms of governmental policies supporting people who have lost their jobs, uh, people who um, uh, don't have the means during during COVID. I mean, it was a very big. Uh, um, it had a very big impact on a lot of people's lives professionally. And uh, what kind of support can you speak to us about uh, in terms of the governmental support that was offered? Um, there, was a, there was a lot of different kinds of things for different groups. So one group, of course, the, for instance, for the entrepreneurs, that was one thing. But if you think about, for instance, uh, people who were uh, lost their employees. jobs. Or employees or for the elderly people uh, there was a lot of cooperation from uh, from calling from from starting with uh, and this was cooperation between local government central government and civil society organizations it start it is it was um, food packages uh, uh, calling those elderly people who for instance were alone at home and and didn't know about uh, or were afraid of the pandemic uh, and and uh, and, and, and that kinds of different kinds of support. So there was a lot, lots of- Was lots there, of, was there yeah. financial support to people who lost their jobs during the pandemic? Like, well, so social security would there, there is at this yeah, point. Yeah, but the, the, that, the, there, was, there, is, uh, there is a social security system in Finland. So there is an un unemployment benefit also in normal times. So, so this was not a, uh, that the normal system, an, an exceptional yeah, yeah. Thing, so the normal yeah. system of the unemployment benefits uh, functions very well also during these pandemic times but then for instance for the elderly uh, people who uh, or, or 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 people who have different kinds of situations uh, in regard to the uh, pandemic in 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 the sense that they couldn't go out of their homes and there was a lot of need, help needed in in there but the unemployment benefit system is is working uh, like in normal conditions as well, yeah. Yeah, so that's very important because that is the safety net of, yeah. of the society during times of crisis and times of challenge. Um, you have a question coming in from Nigeria regarding what we spoke about earlier in ensuring trust between the society and government. And how, in your opinion, is it best to create, uh, what, what are steps governments can do to Gen to create that trust and to build that trust between government and society. We actually asked that from the OECD, so they made us a 170 pages report. But but to take up, <sighs> but so there's a lot of things we can do. Uh, but I think one important thing is uh, uh, which is related to the pandemic. But I think it's really important and and and, and uh, that. Uh, that people have the feeling that they can understand what the government is saying. So kind of clear, plain language. We are very, we use very complicated language at some time. So it doesn't increase yeah. trust if you don't understand what they are talking about. And this is especially, especially important in the, during the pandemic. And then the other, other part is that it's really important that people feel that they are listened to by the government. That there is the, that the government is in in a way kind of uh, um, not just telling people what to do, but listening and and uh, and taking into account and dialoguing with the, with the citizens. So that's that's really crucial, crucial uh, a crucial element. But of course, also um, integrity, uh, ethics, uh, good quality services. Those are very important areas, of course, as well. So. Yes, it's a journey to build this trust at the end of the day. It doesn't come overnight. It's, a, no. it's, a, no. a, it's trust in, in the leadership from top to bottom and bottom to top uh, in, in that they are um, bringing in core values that everyone is united uh, with and in a common vision as well, like you mentioned earlier as well. Yeah. Um, I'll take a few more questions as we're running out of time. Um, okay, so um, 
someone here is asking, uh, in, in your opinion, because the pandemic has shaken uh, so many people in, in many ways, personally and professionally, and uh, you were talking earlier that you had a lot of risk averse policies in place. Um, it was a time when all the challenges have been magnified and it actually affected the mental health of so many people. And, and uh, it's something maybe that was ignored or not paid too much attention to in the past, but it's something that really affected everyone's mental health. And it looks like really mental health is coming at the forefront uh, um, uh, as a challenge to be addressed and no longer to be ignored. Um, and I'm wondering, is there anything in place in Finland that tackles this, or is there an awareness towards the importance of investing in the mental health of uh, the citizens? I, I think that this is an issue that is arising all the time. So it, it's, it is something that is discussed really a lot also here, and, and, and the need is very much kind of uh, uh, seen. And this is something that the government, the civil society organizations, the different organizations, for instance, universities, when it regards students and schools, when it regards uh, regards uh, pupils, uh, are talking about and, and thinking about. And there are a lot of kind of uh, issues, but there is no big uh, project yet, if if you can say so. But it's something that is really, really kind of. Uh, it's a very coming very to the forefront topic, nowadays. Yeah, very hot topic. Yeah, it's a hot topic. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes. Um, uh, so we, we're running out of time and uh, I mean, we would love to answer everyone's questions, but um, we, were, we, 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 we have taken, maybe we can take one last one uh, before we close. Um, so s someone is asking uh, regarding, um, um, let's see. Uh, I, uh, it's another question about uh, uh, the, pa the pandemic and forecasting what comes after the pandemic. Now that most governments uh, have, have um, uh, put out their policies in addressing the, the challenges that we're in, what, in your opinion, comes next in preparing in governments to be prepared for any kind of risk situation that would come in the future? Yes, uh, I, I think that what we were, what we are trying to do is I go back to the to the to what I said in the beginning about the anticipatory uh, uh, government governance uh, anticipatory innovation governance to really have it in to, to not just do a, an a, a project or an exercise now but actually continuously do this all Integrate. the time so that it's built into our system. But of course, this is also something, uh, and I would like to come back to what I mentioned about the climate action and finance policies policy, that this is actually also one area where there's, there's a big cooperation of many, many countries and uh, international organizations, uh, ministers of finance for climate action. So I think th that's a good example. It's it's just one thing, the climate change, but, it, it, but we need these kinds of, um, joint exercises where I think that has over 60 countries that that we are together jointly thinking about these issues that's the, that's the only way so we can think about it in our countries and that's important but we have to link from country to country and then I think one important thing that I said in the beginning but I want to repeat here is that also previously, uh, we knew in the different scenarios, uh, for instance, that the possibility of pandemic. So we, we would need to um, not just um, have these scenarios and, and these futures work as interesting information, but to really kind of think, what will we do? Uh, so trust these kinds of anticipatory and, and, uh, and a foresight exercises to think what, what are the steps we need to do? I'm not just thinking, okay, maybe there's a pandemic, but we will think about it when it comes. So we need to kind of be prepared yeah. for this. But it, it's a very much, I think, a joint international exercise where, where all, the, uh, all possible countries need to join together, yeah. Because the complex yes. issues are not country, uh, country by country, yeah. Specific, exactly. They, they, they affect all of us all over the world. 
um, it's a it's it's a it's a global problem. So um, uh, I mean, you shared amazing, inspiring points and insights on policy making in uncertain times. And uh, uh, I would love to, we there is so much to recap in the uh, important uh, points and best practices and advice that that, uh, that you kindly shared. And um, uh, I'd like to emphasize again your point on um, anticipating these kinds of global challenges is a matter for the global community to collaborate on um, earlier on and uh, anticipate, like you mentioned, uh, anticipatory um, uh, 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 anticipatory innovation is very important. And in being proactive, to imagine these kinds of scenarios is not uh, something to be taken lightly, but it's uh, to pre to be better prepared uh, as governments. Um, and uh, also uh, touching on on your point that you made the importance of trust in government and to build this trust over time and in bringing uh, uh, people uh, from different aspects of, uh, sectors of the society together and, and your point on how Finland has open dialogues that, are, that is a permanent um, fixture as part of uh, your government policy and that, uh, that allows for this uh, public discussions to uh, take place is a very important point you made as well. And uh, the importance of leadership uh, in instilling and building trust and the importance of uh, training and, and skills. And that's uh, what really keeps um, Finland uh, on top of uh, uh, on another level of excellency in terms of its education policy. Um, and with that, I, uh, I, we, I hope to have covered some of the points during our, our discussion. And uh, I'd like to really thank you, uh, Ms. Kachu, for your time. I would like to thank the audience for, uh, for your questions and for your, for your engagement. Um, and uh, thank you uh, for joining us today uh, in uh, policy making under uncertainty. It is indeed a very hot and imp important topic that uh, we all need to engage on uh, more frequently. And thank you for joining us on uh, No Talks, um, brought to you by uh, UNDP and Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum uh, Knowledge Foundation. It was a pleasure uh, to have you all joining us today. Thank you again uh, to everyone who joined us on this in this conversation. Thank you. Thank you also very much on my behalf for all the participants and, and all the for, for the foundation and the UNDP. And, and I, I really want just to, to say again that if anybody wants to contact me by LinkedIn or Twitter or by email, that's uh, my email and is my name and uh, gov.fi. So just feel free to, I will be very happy to answer any more questions that you, you might have. And, and just maybe last, uh, last thought to share with you when I was talking about the global community and the need, I think we all are the global communities. So it, this is not something that is outside us. So it's for us to make the change. So it, it, it is all of us. So thank you for this possibility to be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And yes, it is indeed uh, in all our hands to establish better policy making at the global level. Um, and thank you so much, Ms. Kachu, and uh, to the audience here today. Um, this, is, uh, this has been a real pleasure. And this session falls as the 12th and last session in this year's No Talks edition. But please stay tuned, uh, audience. Um, there could be an announcement soon that the series uh, could possibly be extended. So everybody, please stay tuned. Thank you again, Ms. Kachu, for your time. And thank you, everyone in the audience, for your amazing questions that you shared and insights. Thank you. Thank you.